आउट पेशेंट हिस्टेरोस्कोपी फ्रॉम आर सी यू जी ग्रीन टॉप गाइडलाइन अगस्त टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी फोर इज द टॉपिक ऑफ अवर डिस्कशन टूडे वट आर द रिक्वायरमेंट्स फॉर रनिंग एंड इफेक्टिव आउट पेशेंट हिस्टेरोस्कोपी सर्विस इंडिकेशंस ऑल गैनिकोलॉजी डिपार्टमेंट्स शुड हैव अ डेडिकेटेड आउट पेशेंट हिस्टेरोस्कोपी सर्विस टू एड केयर ऑफ वुमेन और पीपल विद एब नॉर्मल यूट्राइन ब्लीडिंग reproductive problems and insertion or re- retrieval of intrauterine devices outpatient hysteroscopy should be conducted outside of a formal operating theater setting in an appropriately sized equipped and staffed treatment room with adjoining private changing facility and toilet this may be a dedicated hysteroscopy suite or a multi purpose facility There should be a minimum of two support staff consisting of at least one registered nurse and one healthcare assistant. Written information should be provided to the women prior to their appointment and this should include the details about the procedure, the benefits and risk, advice regarding preoperative analgesia. as well as an alternative options for care and contact details for hysteroscopy unit women and people should be made aware of other settings and modes of anesthesia for hysteroscopy for example under general or regional anesthesia or intravenous sedation how should consent be obtained prior to hysteroscopy verbal and written informed consent should be given by the woman during their appointment prior to hysteroscopy being performed the woman should be advised that if they find the procedure too painful or distressing at any point they must alert the clinical team who will stop the procedure immediately the clinical team should alert hysteroscopy if woman appears to be in too much pain or is experiencing the vesovagal episode and is therefore unable to voice the concern so that the procedure can be stopped should a pre procedural safety checklist be performed prior to the outpatient hysteroscopy completion of safety checklist should be considered prior to outpatient hysteroscopy pregnancy should be excluded in all women who are premenopausal and sexually active how should care after outpatient hysteroscopy be provided clinical findings further care and likely time scales of the results where appropriate should be discussed with the woman once they are changed and comfortable a written summary of this information should be provided to the woman and their gp women should be provided with both verbal and written information as to when and how to contact their local unit units should have a dedicated recovery area with comfortable chairs and curtain area with beds and trolleys etc access should be available to extended recovery when pain cannot be easily controlled or complications have arisen during the procedure how should training and standards in outpatient hysteroscopy be provided and assessed a hysteroscopic training program should include knowledge and understanding of both basic and advanced skills relevant to the hysteroscopic procedures along with the aspects of clinical governance in hysteroscopy simulation should be considered an important adjunct to hysteroscopy training what analgesia should be recommended prior to outpatient hysteroscopy and how should it be given in order to reduce pain felt by the woman during and after their procedure women or people should be advised to take standard doses of oral ansets one hour before their scheduled appointment where ansets are contraindicated for example in certain asthmatics women or people with a renal impairments or gastric ulceration or decline the use of transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation or tens should be considered oral opioid or antispasmodic agents can be used for the women with contraindications to ansets provided they are made aware of the increased risk of adverse effects 
women or people should be offered inhaled nitrous oxide which is a mixture of 50% nitrous oxide and 50% oxygen panthrox should be considered for reduction of the pain associated with outpatient hysteroscopy should cervical preparation be used in order to facilitate outpatient hysteroscopy cervical preparation should not be used routinely if vaginal prostaglandins are to be administered they should be given 12 hours before hysteroscopy however clinicians should consider the feasibility of administration side effect profile and alternative options including the use of local anesthesia and cervical dilatation indications of cervical preparations include the case where cervical stenosis is anticipated or there is need to dilate the cervix beyond 6 mm to accommodate the uterine instrumentation what size and angle of hysteroscopy should be used in outpatient setting hysteroscopy of 3.5 mm or less in outer diameter is the preferred one when performing operative hysteroscopy smallest diameter hysteroscopy should be used with a consideration given to the use of hysteroscopy with extendable outer working channel because they are associated with the less pain when performing operative hysteroscopy using mechanical hysteroscopic tissue removal in system the smallest diameter system available that is appropriate for the procedure should be used choice of hysteroscopy lens angle should be left to the discretion of the clinician should rigid or flexible hysteroscope be used routinely in outpatient setting the choice of whether a rigid or flexible hysteroscope is used should be left to the discretion of hysteroscopist what devices should be used for operative procedures in outpatient setting Mechanical hysteroscopic tissue removal system should be preferred over miniature bipolar electrodes to remove endometrial polyps. The choice of device for outpatient endometrial ablation should be left to the clinician discretion and familiarity. Inactivated mechanical mini scissors should be preferred over miniature bipolar electrodes to remove the uterine septa. What devices should be used for operative procedures in outpatient settings? That is what we have explained here. What uterine distension medium should be used during outpatient hysteroscopy? Saline is recommended as the distension media for outpatient hysteroscopy. Warming saline to approximate body temperature for outpatient hysteroscopy can be considered. fluid installation methods and the effect on pain acceptability and feasibility have not been compared for outpatient hysteroscopy however current approaches include first of all the use of automated fluid management system for example setting initial intrauterine pressure at 40 to 50 mm of mercury and increasing to minimum needed to obtain a satisfactory view the other approach include manually distilling fluid via syringe and titrating the distension next approach is titrating the inflow using the tap on the inflow channel and or outflow channel if a continuous flow hysteroscopy another approach is using continuous flow via a gravity feed or external compression although care needs to be taken to ensure initial pressure is kept low and that it is maintained to ensure the view is adequate should local anesthesia be administered prior to outpatient hysteroscopy local anesthesia should not be routinely administered prior to outpatient hysteroscopy where a vaginoscopic approach is used it should be considered where the use of vaginal speculum is planned for example where cervical dilatation is anticipated due to either cervical stenosis and or utilization of larger diameter hysteroscope of more than 5 mm outer diameter what local anesthesia should be administered and how should it be given prior to outpatient hysteroscopy The choice of the local anesthetic agent for outpatient hysteroscopy should be left to the discretion of hysteroscopy. The choice 
of routes of administration of the local anesthesia for outpatient hysteroscopy should be left to the discretion of hysteroscopist. However, intrauterine fundal anesthesia should be considered for the reduction of the pain during outpatient endometrial ablation. Short-acting local anesthetic, for example, mepivacaine, lidocaine, prilocaine require at least 2 minutes and longer acting agents for example bupivacaine require at least 5 minutes to allow for the onset of effect. Should conscious sedation be used to reduce pain associated with outpatient hysteroscopic procedure? Conscious sedation should not be routinely used in outpatient hysteroscopic procedure. If conscious sedation is to be employed, women and people must be appropriately selected beforehand and hysteroscopy must be performed in a suitable environment where there is separate staff member who has the skills and equipment necessary to monitor vital observation and recognize the care for the women and people who are over sedated. Does vaginoscopic approach to the outpatient hysteroscopy reduce pain and increase the feasibility of the procedure? Vaginoscopy should be the standard technique for outpatient hysteroscopy unless the use of vaginal speculum is required. For example, when dilating the cervix or obtaining uh, a blind endometrial biopsy. Vaginoscopy should still be considered after using vaginal speculum to administer local anesthesia to the cervix and or cervical dilatation in order to reduce the pain associated with the genital tract instrumentation and increase the maneuverability of the hysteroscope. Should outpatient antibiotic prophylaxis be implied in outpatient hysteroscopy procedure to reduce the incidence of procedural related infection? Routine antibiotic prophylaxis is not recommended for outpatient hysteroscopic procedure. Outpatient hysteroscopy should be delayed and genital tract swabs taken and or antibiotic administered if pelvic infection is suspected and confirmed micro biological infection should be treated with antibiotics. If a pyometra is diagnosed at the time of outpatient hysteroscopy, antibiotics should be administered immediately to minimize the risk of systemic infection. How should procedural technique and finding at hysteroscopy be recorded? A standardized proforma is recommended for the documentation of hysteroscopic technique and findings. Items that should be recorded pertaining to the technique include operator or surgeon, hysteroscope, operative devices, approach, vaginoscopy or speculum, distension media use, local anesthesia, which include the agent, volume or roots, cervical instrumentation like tenaculum cervical dilatation equipments, biopsy, operative procedure, use of oral or inhalational medications, procedural success and reasons for abandonment and complications management. Items that should be recorded regarding the findings include impression and description of the vulva, vagina, cervix and endometrium, visualization of both ostia, details of any congenital anomalies, and the uterocervical length should be recorded when global biopsy is taken or an intrauterine device fitted. So that is the end of this video. I have summarized the whole guideline of August 2024 outpatient hysteroscopy in this video. If you have any comment, write in the comment section of this video and follow the Facebook page of On Ops and Gyne and sub subscribe this YouTube channel of On Ops and Gyne. Thank you so much. Allah Hafiz.